Ready to transform your tennis forehand into a confident, reliable weapon? Let's dive right into your new five-day training program that will make it a reality, but only if you follow along and put in the reps. Day five is focused completely on bringing your power, acceleration, and racket head speed to the next level, and that begins by training as much looseness and efficiency of movement as possible. That's why Kirby's first drill features slow, smooth shadow swings with a very narrow focus. She's working on leading the swing with her hips and shoulders while keeping her arm and shoulder as relaxed as possible, which is the opposite of what most amateur athletes do when trying to make a more powerful forehand swing. Notice how she has progressively ramped up the speed of her swing while keeping her kinetic chain usage and looseness high quality. That's tough to do, but exactly what I want you to work on for the first part of this training session. Kirby is using an open stance here, but you can feel free to use whatever you're comfortable with. The next drill is pretty unique and a bit of a mind bender, so I hope you're ready for a challenge. Kirby is making two shadow swings with a frame that has no strings, and then on the third rep, dropping a ball with the goal of making the exact same swing, even though she won't be hitting the ball. The training purpose behind this is in learning how to stay flowing and relaxed even though your brain and body are expecting a collision between the ball and the racket. It sounds crazy, but trust me, the first time you try this, you'll notice your tension and swing speed ratchet up immediately when the ball is there. Kirby has done an excellent job maintaining her tempo on each set of three swings. Once you have success at a slow speed, you can progressively increase acceleration the way that Kirby has. Drill three is a continuation of the same concept as the previous exercise, but now you'll actually make contact with the ball using a strung racket. Kirby is starting with a really slow, calm swing speed and executing two shadow swings followed by an actual hit. Her goal is to lead with her body, keep her arm totally relaxed, and make all three swings exactly the same amount of effort and speed. Then, as she gains confidence and comfort with a slow speed, she'll slowly increase acceleration while staying really mindful about the tension in her body. If you pay attention, you'll almost certainly feel more tightness creep into your swings as you try to swing faster. That's exactly what we're working hard to avoid, so don't rush through this, and feel free to drop down in speed if you need to so that the quality of your training can stay nice and high. Speaking of training, if you want to make the most out of your next practice session, make sure to download a copy of our free forehand worksheet so you can have a step-by-step -step guide to these drills on your phone or tablet. Simply click the link in the description or go to 5dayforehand.com. All right, now on to drill four, which features a narrow focus on increasing swing size and range of motion. The two specific elements Kirby is focusing on are her hips and shoulders. She wants both to be facing towards the wall to her left upon the smooth completion of her swing, regardless of using a square stance or open stance. You'll also notice that on both styles of swing, she's finishing with the butt cap of her racket pointing towards the wall as well. This long, full range of motion with her body and swing path allows for huge potential for acceleration. Please note that these finish positions are pretty exaggerated, although you will see professional players finishing in them depending on point situations. All these reps should be slow and calm to simply focus on quality of execution. Drill 5 takes the next step by starting to practice hitting the ball with your longer, more exaggerated swing size. You'll see Kirby practice both square stance swings and open stance swings with the framework of two shadow swings followed by a drop and hit repetition. Her focus is on completing the same benchmarks for drill four while maintaining good smoothness and balance. As you get comfortable with this technique and the different stances, you can start slowly increasing your swing speed. Combining speed with length will give you the ultimate in power, spin, and offense, but be really careful to progress very slowly or else tension will creep in and kill your results. Next, Kirby is going to bring everything together into a live ball rally, which is always the most difficult setting to try something new. While she and I rally, her goal is to start each exchange with a few slow but full and relaxed swings and then slowly ramp up her swing speed until it's pretty aggressive while maintaining control of what she's doing. When you try this, your tendency is going to be to get tight, shorten your swing path, and cut down on how much you use your body. If you feel that happening, pause for a few shadow swings, drop a few balls for yourself to hit, and really make sure that execution is excellent before going back into live rallies again. 
Controlling the quality of your training in this way is the key to being successful with your forehand improvements. Go ahead and click the videos to move forward or back in this five-day training series. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell 